Here are some lessons for young investors from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, is a name synonymous with success, wisdom, and wealth in the world of investment. For those in their 20s and younger, the sage advice and life story of Buffett offer invaluable lessons, and these lessons can help shape your financial future. Let's start off by giving you a brief overview of who Warren Buffett is and why his wisdom on investing should be listened to. Warren Buffett is an American businessman, investor, and philanthropist who currently serves as the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. The son of U.S. Congressman and businessman Howard Buffett, he developed an interest in business and investing during his youth. He entered the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania in 1947 before graduating from the University of Nebraska at 19. He went on to graduate from Columbia Business School, where he molded his investment philosophy around the concept of value investing pioneered by Benjamin Graham. He attended New York Institute of Finance to focus on his economics background and soon pursued a business career. He later began various business ventures and investment partnerships, including one with Graham. He created Buffett Partnership Limited in 1956, and his investment firm eventually acquired a textile manufacturing firm, Berkshire Hathaway, assuming its name to create a diversified holding company. Buffett emerged as the company's chairman and majority shareholder in 1970. In 1978, fellow investor and longtime business associate Charlie Munger joined Buffett as vice chairman. Since 1970, Buffett has presided as the chairman and largest shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway one of America's foremost holding companies and world's leading corporate conglomerates. He has been referred to as the Oracle or Sage of Omaha by global media as a result of having accumulated a massive fortune derived from his business and investment success. He is noted for his adherence to the principles of value investing and his frugality despite his wealth. His primary two rules which every investor should adhere to always stick in my mind. Rule 1. Never lose money. This here is what every investor aims to do. And rule two, never forget about rule one. Buffett has shared much more advice with fellow investors, but there's one lesson that should stand above the rest for the young cohort. That's the power of time and how rule one always comes into play. That because while it's true that Buffett made a significant portion of his wealth after the age of 50, this was largely due to the miraculous effects of compounding, but also due to never selling any shares at a loss. Buffett will hold his shares for as long as it takes for him to make the return he wants. The trick being that even if your portfolio shows as a negative on paper until you actually go to sell your holdings, you haven't lost any money. It's the same when people say your property is in negative equity. It's never in a negative equity unless you're selling your house, and if you're sensible, you don't sell your house unless it's made you money or at the least broken even. The hallmark of Buffett's success is undoubtedly the magical concept of compounding. This phenomenon, which he refers to as the eighth wonder of the world, is responsible for the substantial growth of his wealth. Compounding accelerates the growth of investments over time, and the sooner one starts, the more powerful the effect. It essentially works because, by reinvesting your returns also known as dividends year after year, you start to earn interest on your interest as well as your starting capital. For anyone in their 20s, it's a huge opportunity, even starting with a small sum. Compounding takes time to work its magic, making the early years of investment crucial for long-term wealth accumulation. You've all heard the saying that making the first $100,000 is harder than making it to the next level of $1 million. This is true the first five years of investing, if your capital is not that large, is always the hardest and the gains take their time which does put a lot of people off as we now live in a society where we expect to see instant gratification. Buffett's long-term outlook syncs perfectly with the principles of compound returns, allowing him to reinvest returns in his carefully selected long-term investments year after year. The Oracle of Omaha also takes a long-term approach due to his focus on value investing. This is the practice of investing in companies that appear to be trading at a discount versus their intrinsic or book values. Moreover, his commitment to long-termism enables him to ride out market volatility avoid emotional decisions, and focus on the enduring value of his investments. What does investing for the long run and leveraging time look like for young investors? Well, let's imagine I'm starting a portfolio at the age of 20, and I have no starting capital, and because I have no starting capital, I'm going to commit to contributing $200 a month, 
and I'm going to increase that contribution by 5% annually, broadly in line current inflation. The thing is, at 20, I've got a long investment horizon, and theoretically, I could be working for the next 50 years. So, taking into account the aforementioned and using a 8% annualized return as an example, I'd potentially have $3.2 million at the end of the term. Of course, if I invest poorly, I could lose money. Compound returns also works negatively, too. But while I've used 8% as an example, it's worth noting that more experienced investors will aim for low double-digit annualized returns. If we swapped 8% in our calculation for 12%, the end figure after 50 years would be $12.6 million. That's a phenomenal number. The key points you can learn from Warren Buffett are firstly to never sell assets for a loss and look at the long-term gain rather than short-term gratification. The next lesson is to reinvest the dividend payments as this will compound any interest. The third lesson is to start investing sooner rather than later as time in the market is better than trying to time the market. The final lesson is to make sure you research the stocks you plan on buying and to remember that when buying stocks, you're actually buying a part of the company. So you need to make sure they have a viable business with good forecasts and not just any flash in the plan startup. He is definitely worth spending some time reading up on, and until the next time, stay financially savvy.